Who is Jesus and what is it that they know about Jesus? I began questioning them. I, Jesus to me is the God of all creation, the, the I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the Word that became flesh, the uh, one who created everything through him, everything was created for him, and that it includes invisible and visible creation from heaven to earth and to all universe was created for him and through him. They explained to me that Jesus is, is a uh, God that uh, was created by God. Supposedly, he was the first of all creation. And Jesus is just uh, a creation of God's uh, intention as he initially created uh, humanity as well to become gods as well. Differentiating between the original context of the Bible and their new 1800s translation of the New World Testimony or Testament. So why wasn't the original Bible sufficient in, in, uh, for them? Well, because their agenda was to change the understanding of who God was, uh, the hierarchy of the Trinity, uh, deviations or additions or subtractions from the original text. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, however this video finds you. My name is Chris Pascu, and this video is a, a little bit about a, uh, I guess, a, a encounter with a Jehovah Witness and a group of Jehovah Witnesses, and specifically a, a um, main uh, witness that uh, I guess was more educated than the rest. And what does that mean? Well, here's uh, a couple weeks ago, I walked through the park, a uh, local park nearby my home. I was just walking on my way to, uh, after dropping off my daughter to, um, to, uh, to, to see, to sightsee. And here I am walking, minding my own business, where in the far corner of the park, uh, near a playground, where a lot of families are gathered, there's these three nice ladies that are sitting uh, or standing handing out some flyers about Jehovah Witness. And so as I walk by, they hand me out the flyer and they ask me a question about Jesus. And so I became intrigued. I, I wanted to understand what it is that they're trying to explain about Jesus and, you know, what is Jesus to them? Uh, I wanted to know what they wanted to address and also know. And I'm certain they wanted to teach me something. So. With that in mind, I began questioning, who is Jesus and what is it that they know about Jesus? They wanted to teach me or do Bible studies. And so I began questioning them. I said, you know what? Jesus to me is the God of all creation, the, the I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the Word that became flesh, the uh, one who created everything through him. Everything was created for him. And that it includes invisible and visible creation from heaven to earth and to all universe was created for him and through him. He is the one who was and existed before all things. And along with God and the Holy Spirit, we consider Jesus part of the Trinity, the, the, um, the person uh, that was incarnated on this earth to represent the power, the, the eternal uh, creator that uh, walked on this planet and, and uh, manifested himself in the, in the person of Jesus that exists today uh, in eternal universe and, and uh, omnipresent, omnipotent. And anyway, without going, here's my dog, by the way. My dog likes to hold my hand, literally. If I move my hand, she comes licking it. Look at this, watch this. What is it, you want my hand? And she digs, she dig, literally digs my hand. She needs a companion. She is a companion dog that needs a companion. Anyway, going back to my story, uh, I told them who I know uh, Jesus to be, and and uh, of course they, they, uh, they were very controversial in the way they understood who Jesus was. And so my curiosity became, uh, I guess, uh, uh, I, I became more curious to understand why they think the way they do. And it is 
pretty clear now because after a number of uh, days of studying their their Jehovah Witness uh, system or or policies or guidelines, it is pretty clear why they know what they know and why they believe what they believe, and it's also very accurate with the rest of historical evidence of all false religions and uh, uh, and uh, deviations from the original text. What I what what I mean by that is that the more I I, I began I began questioning these ladies, for instance, I. Uh, they explained to me that Jesus is is a uh, God that uh, was created by God. Supposedly, he was the first of all creation. And uh, through him, uh, all other things were created. Uh, he also, they also believe and they understand that God is um, indeed the... Uh, the eternal God, the uh, not the omnipotent God or the omnipresent God, but the God that uh, they call Jehovah, and Jesus is just uh, a creation of God's uh, intention as He initially created uh, humanity as well to become gods as well, and one day to to uh, to rule as. Uh, as they claim to rule in their in their doctrine, so uh, lots of controversial issues, lots of uh, issues with differentiating between the original context of the Bible and their new 1800s translation of the New World Testimony or Testament. I think NWT. Uh, which was the translated uh, version by some Bible study scholars who didn't know much Greek, didn't know much Hebrew, but decided to translate and create a New World Translation or an NWT Bible in the 18, late 1800s. And so why wasn't the original Bible sufficient in, in, uh, for them? Well, because their agenda was to change the understanding of who God was, uh, the hierarchy of the Trinity, and to infiltrate a biased opinion on the creation model and also the uh, Trinity in, uh, formation, including with including uh, lots of other uh, deviations or additions or subtractions from the original text. So with that in mind, these nice ladies were trying to explain to me all they knew. And so I listened in curiosity. I listened, I listened, I said, well, what do you think about the verse where, you know, I mean, there's three or four mentioning first, John talks about it, uh, uh, Paul writes about it in Colossians, uh, where Jesus is identified as the war. Well, first of all, Jesus is identified as the one through whom and for whom all things were created. And obviously they didn't want to reference or uh, to respond to that question. They deviated and they redirected the conversation into a different issue. Uh, I also brought up the issue about, uh, or the verse that talks about uh, the word became flesh. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Um, of course, they deviated and they redirected the conversation somewhere else. It became very obvious that they didn't want to answer my questions, but they want to prophesy or pro uh, proclaim their belief system. And so I needed to know more. And, uh, you know, I was curious why they wanted to know uh, why they they knew what they knew, and why was, wh why did they want to, hello, why did they want to ignore reality or the historical evidence of the Bible prior to 1800s when these individuals had no idea about Greek and Hebrew? I mean, they knew home studies, Greek and Hebrew versus theological um, um, 
uh, scrutiny from uh, monks and, and uh, philosophers uh, who have ass assembled the Bible and, and uh, translated the Bible and, 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 and its thousands and, and various contexts to reflect uh, the books of the Bible that exists currently and the translations prior to the 1800s. So here's some individuals that have decided to create the new NWT testimony of the Bible, which contradicted in so many different ways the original text. So these people believed, these three women believed in, in what their Bible said, which was pretty clear after reading through it, that indeed words were added or subtracted or changed to create um, uh, uh, a difference in opinion, especially in how they seen the Trinity model and um, a, very, a number of other issues. For instance, they don't celebrate birthdays. And one of the first things I brought up, I said, well, since you don't celebrate birthdays, what about Jesus's birthday? You know, when, when the Magi's, um, arrived uh, because they wanted to uh, glorify the king that was cre that that became uh, uh, that came alive um, uh, the magis came and brought myrrh and frankincense and gifts from afar isn't that a celebration there's only two mentions of one being John the Baptist being beheaded where you know the queen and the daughter of the queen wanted John the Baptist said and then the other events similar and so what is there to celebrate because the Bible doesn't really um, teach people to celebrate birthdays or uh, depict any uh, good birthdays uh, in, in essence uh, birthdays are because it doesn't teach to uh, celebrate birthdays and therefore they don't celebrate birthdays I said, well, his birthday is celebration, uh, and if it's a celebration, did Jesus celebrate any celebrations? Like, you know, weddings uh, and um, various other traditional uh, Passover and, and uh, Han Hanukkah and all those things that existed were celebrations of the Old Testament, no matter if they were part of the culture or traditions. There were celebrations after all, but most of all, what about Jesus's birthday? You know, when he was born, the Magi showed up. So their understanding, and this includes their text, this is why they understand this, their text speaks of the Magi being astrologers from far away who were sent by, supposedly their understanding is that the Magi that were sent to see Jesus's birth at the time that Jesus was in the... Um, you know, um, in uh, being uh, given birth, the Magi's, they believed they were sent by Satan and later to kill Jesus. And later, apparently God convinced them otherwise, so they returned the other way. Um, so not only the Magi's were astrologers who were, uh, I guess, practicing divination on the stars, um, but they were speaking or sent by Satan to kill Jesus and only after God spoke to them did they, set, did they go the other way. So where does that come from? Well, it's pretty simple. If you read their NWT version, astrology is obviously a uh, practice that is not uh, um, a godly practice or a uh, practice in the Old Testament that is um, allowed um, to be a reference of godlike, uh, 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 I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I lost the words. Uh, to be associated with God, uh, but astronomy is two different things, or a different a different practice. And so, uh, their 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 NWT NWT translation identified the. The Magi's as astrologers. So that's another word that's taken out of context, redirected, and added to the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible do the Magi's identify, are they the original Bible, are they identify astrologers? Um, and the difference between astrologers and astronomers is that 
astro astrologers uh, wish upon stars and use the stars to meditate and to create uh, various uh, uh, practices unlike following the stars is an astronomy that's being still astronomy model still being practiced today we look at the stars and we look at the north star and we know which way to go uh, we look at the moon or the sun and we know that the sun sets on the east especially if you live in the west on the west coast in, in america um, and uh, i'm sorry starts from the east and sets on the west so is that astrology or is that astronomy i believe that's astronomy and most college uh level courses teach astronomy and it does not go against God's uh, direction or, or um, uh, guidance or practice uh, in any way. And so that was what the Magi's originally practiced back in those, those days. They followed the star that led them to where Jesus was born, um, to Bethlehem. And so their context of their 18 hundred and late Bible that was readapted or recreated uh, to uh, create a biases or an, an actual false interpretation of who Jesus is and some of these uh, events are all in um, incorrect incorrect with the original text of the bible the original greek and the original hebrew the original coin greek coinage greek or coin greek uh, the translations of the uh, of the disciples and the old testament uh doctrines that were left to uh be scrutinized by the monks and the scribes and the uh super uh studious uh individuals that have dedicated their lives to to these uh, translations. These individuals are who the Bibles, the translations of the Bible were, uh, uh, were, were, uh, were, 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 were created by. These individuals that dedicated their lives, not just some guy that did Bible studies at home had no idea, clearly no idea by, about Greek and Hebrew or not enough to compare. Uh, and so lots of scholars uh, denounce the NWT translations. They uh, more than 99% of the scholars today that have researched it, the NWT Christian scholars, you know, educated in Hebrew and Greek, have said there are so many malfunctions, uh, errors, uh, critical uh, er uh, mistakes or deviations or additions in the NWT translations that. It is illogical for someone to use it as a Bible. These are words that were um, posted and have been spoken about uh, by decades long scholars and theologians uh, of the Greek and Hebrew texts. Um, and so they, they, uh, they basically reject the NWT um, uh, Bible that was created by these individuals. And so um, spending a few minutes, literally uh, half an hour approximately with these ladies, and I wanted to understand why they choose to reject the old version of the Bible or the original version of the Bible and go with this new version that they specifically believe in. And so they didn't have the time or the patience and they ended up... Uh, calling some guy who came out and spent some time with me explaining some circumstances and so let me uh let me take a phone call here looks like my wife's calling and then i'll come back to explain what happened with that event in an effort to try to figure out why they believe what they believe i continued interviewing this now new Jehovah Witness, a male who seemed very much more educated than his predecessors. And after each question I asked, he deviated and redirected the conversation continuously until, I guess, exhaustion. I kept on probing, and minutes later, I was asked to stop. 
Um, I was basically asked to stop asking questions. He then persuaded me to attempt to learn from him, but first to make an effort to forget everything I know of the Bible. He said, by letting go of what I know, I can better understand his point of view. He also said, the only way to learn is to submit to his teachings without questions. It is here where I recognize the struggle with people who have no knowledge of the truth. If I had to blindly follow this man without questions and without prior independent knowledge, I would have been led astray just as all of his colleagues did. If you're still with me, listen. The times of the end are getting closer. Let me end this video with the reason why I believe the Jehovah Witness is a cult and not, and again I state, and not any God instrument, any godly instrument for salvation. So I'll read to you from Matthew 24, starting with verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one will deceive you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ. It is sad to see that many are led astray, but believe it or not, they believe that they are doing God's will. It is sad to see, but it is the reality of our future days to come. The book of Revelations talk about the returning of our Messiah, the God incarnated, the Jesus that lived amongst us that will return for his bride. And one day we will be raptured up in heaven. He will embrace us and we will be in eternity with him in everlasting life. So don't listen to the cults, to the false religions, to the false doctrines, but be equipped with the word, study the word, uh, meditate on the word, allow God to independently, instrumentally affect your vision through the power of the Holy Spirit so you can see with eyes that are purified through the Holy Spirit what the word, the true manual of life, tells you it is all about. The life that we live in must be an echo of your life through the word. If you don't echo through the word of God, through the manual of life, you will fall captive to the deceiving standards of our life through the enemy's influ influence, through the implications, and through the, the worldly points of view. Don't fall in a trap. The enemy wants to destroy, devour, and put aside anything that is an echo or a reflection of who God is. May you find peace in the Word of God. May you study the Word of God daily and meditate on its words through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And may nothing, nothing in this world have an effect on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.